Hey everyone, I'm Jacob Beerwagon. Welcome to the Fox Motorsports channel. On today's video, I'm gonna show you three ways to check your deck clearance. Um, first way, we're gonna use a dial indicator, which is the standard, most common, probably the most efficient and accurate way. And if you don't have that tool, we're going to show you a third or a second me method. Um, you'll need something straight and flat and feeler gauges. And for the third method, I'm gonna show you how to check it using good old calipers. All right, everyone, I'm trying to decide what thickness head gasket to get for this engine to put it back together. So as you can see, I cleaned all the carbon off of this piston here. Um, I have my dial indicator set up, so I'm gonna find the highest spot and I'm gonna see, I'm gonna slide that dial onto the deck surface and see how much that piston's sticking out of the bore. Um, and then I'll show you guys afterwards, if you don't have a dial indicator, how you can check this. Okay. So we're going up, 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 up. One thou. All right, it was at one thou there. Oh, right there. Okay, one thou. All right, now when I'm doing this, um, this is uh, this base is tightened up, um, but it's not the most rigid thing. So if you go reefing on it, you could kind of adjust it, and then when you go back to the piston, it won't still read zero um, or one or whatever it's reading. So. We're gonna zero that. And then, so when you're doing this, this is an aluminum block, so there's really not a lot that this magnet is holding on to. It's just these sleeves here. So I'm gonna just grab the base, not touch this, because I don't want that to move. I just want the base to slide on the deck surface here. So I'm gonna grab that, and I'm gonna very carefully slide it onto the deck surface there. And you can see that we're six thou lower there. And then we slide back onto the piston. Okay, now we're back to zero. Another way to do this, you could zero it on the deck if it, you know, just think if you don't want to do any math. <clears throat> well, you're gonna have to do math. <laughs> so zero it on the deck rotate it onto the piston and there it looks like we're five and a half thou out of the block so that means the thinnest head gasket i can run and still have a 30 thou gap yeah, is going to be a 40 probably a 40 40 thou thick head gasket um, and that will get me uh 35 thousands clearance on this piston here which is cylinder one um, and you could go throughout and check a few more of these cylinders just to see if they're consistent. Um, but that's how you do it. Okay, now if you don't have a dial indicator, there's another method you can use. You can get something flat, like a straight edge or something. And normally I would put this, you know, whatever straight across the deck surface here and then slide my feeler gauge um, under between the piston and this. But since we already measured it, we know the piston's actually sticking out of the deck or out of the block uh, six thou. So what we're gonna have to do is measure it. Uh, we'll rest this on the piston and then measure between the, the piston and the block, or sorry, the, the straight edge and the block. Anyways, and we don't have to dick around too much here. We know what the gap's gonna be, but I'll show you anyways. Oh, kind of a stretch here for me. All right, so six slides fairly easy. And if you were gonna check this, um, you know, not knowing what the gap is already, I would go to a five thou and just uh, see how much the resistance changes. Come on, yeah. And there's a little 
less resistance there. So then you would go to your next one, which would be seven thou. Anyways, and you would just, uh, you know, find a happy medium. You want something that's slightly snug. You don't want to have to force it too much, but this, it's every time I slip it under there, it starts moving my straight edge around because it's lifting the straight edge off the flat surface of the piston because it's too big. So we know that's too big. So there we go. And I think using this method, you could get it within a few, um, you know, within a thou or two. Um, now the tough part is finding top dead center when you don't have a dial indicator, which means you're gonna have to take this, these tools, you're gonna have to get it visually where it looks like it's at top dead center, check it, rotate it a little bit, see where it changes, and just keep doing that until you find the high spot, which is obviously more time consuming, but you know, if you wanna save time, buy a dial indicator. Okay, now for the third method, we're using the calipers. And there's a few ways to check it using these. So, and what this is really gonna be is a lesson on calipers. Um, so there's this, so, well, let me find the camera, there we go. So there's that step right there. And not everyone knows this, but that right here is actually an accurate or set, you know, within a few thou way to measure right there. Okay, most people, only measure between the uh, jaws here, or they measure on this side for ID, this side for OD. Um, but you can actually measure steps using this right here, and also the bottom has a part that protrudes. And you can use both those to check the step. So let me show you what I mean. More because I think it's the best way to find top dead center to start with, and I'm gonna show, it, show you guys what I mean. So we're gonna drop that downside, and when it comes back up, it's gonna tell us where top dead center is. See? We're using the, this method right here to tell us where top dead center is. All right. right now we're at top dead center. You can drop that down. And what you need to do is just make sure that you're flush on the bottom here and you're not rocking back and forth at all because that'll mess up your measurement. Slide her down. There, we're at six. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you later.